Hi guys, welcome back to Chop's Garage. Look what we've got in again. It's the Citroen DS. So DS3, this is the 1.6 turbo petrol. For those of you that might not have seen the earlier video, I bought this probably over a month ago from a main dealer pipe exchange yard. Um, when I first started it there, when it had been sat for a number of days, the it started with a rough idle and the engine didn't sound great. So I thought there was a problem with it. So I put a bid in on it, a low bid, obviously based on there being a problem. And then I had it picked up by our delivery driver, Adrian from A&K Van Services. Now the funny thing was when he unloaded it for me, I was telling him about this engine noise. He said, well, it didn't make any engine noise when I started it. And um, as he drove it off, it didn't sound like it at all. So I turned it off, started it again, didn't make the noise. So really strange. So I drove it home and back and it didn't make the noise. Then I left it here for a few days, started again, it made the noise again. So I popped it down to the guys at Moore's for them to have a look at, assuming on this engine that it might be timing chain related because these are renowned for it, but it has only done 30,000 miles. So initially the guys down there started it a number of times, moved it around the yards and said, look, we're not hearing what you're hearing. And then just before they gave it back to me, this, they started it one day, heard the noise, said, yeah, there is something there. So they took the top off the engine um, to have a look at the cams, the cover off the top of the engine, have a look at the cams and check the time. Um, now with the timing, they found that the timing wasn't actually out. So there wasn't really a problem with that. And what they did see is that the camshafts had a little bit of um, light corrosion to them. And like the engine had been sitting either with the top off or sitting for a long period of time, allowing condensation to build up. They took the variable valve off the back um, solenoid for doing the oil pressure for the variable valve timing and they said that was free um, and it was okay so at that point no one really knew what the issue was they said look we can't actually see there's an issue with anything there um, so the decision was made we did get a timing kit to put on it but because the time wasn't out the decision was made not to do the timing kit so the only thing we did change is this solenoid in the um, in the back of the engine that does that oil pressure just in case there was some some fault with it and they've given it back to me and said you know put it back together and said James give it a go but we don't want to just fire apart starts gun at it because we're not sure there's actually a problem so I've got it back now I have driven it back up here and it didn't do it so what it was was it was like a slight erratic idle and it sounded almost time and chainy but not if that makes sense um, so let's start it up now I say it's only done 30,000 miles it's got a full service history the service history is 100% as yeah, so we start it now there you go just goes straight to a perfectly fine idle now, if it was timing chain related, you'd expect there to be some consistency with it, wouldn't you? If the guides were worn or there was slack in the chain, you'd expect that to be consistent. But we just don't get that consistency with it. And you can start it nine times out of ten, and it's absolutely fine. So, in all honesty, I'm at a loss as to what to do with it. At the moment, my, my plan is to drive it for a couple of days. Um, and see how often this thing happens if it does happen again at all since we've done the, the solenoid on it uh, we did oil and filter and we did new spark plugs as well so uh, we have done quite a bit I know we said we didn't do anything but we have done quite a bit so new spark plugs new oil and filter new solenoid in the back um, as it sits here now it seems absolutely fine um, doesn't feel particularly fast um, but I don't know how fast these are um, I've had the Cooper but it was an earlier Cooper that I think as I recall felt quicker um I don't know I don't know I, I do have a habit of over analyzing these things a little bit um I guess it may well be something where someone really driving it every day would never notice it but I don't know I don't know it's a difficult one what to do with it it really is it seems too good to stick for an auction because the trouble with the auction is the assumption is going to be that there's a major mechanical problem with it when there doesn't seem to be at all Difficult one. Comment down below. Any suggestions as to what you think you'd do with it? Let me know. Um, other than that, I'll just have to give you an update after I've driven it for a couple of days. Oh, again, for those of you that didn't see the other videos, there were no codes on it at all. So there, 
we didn't pull up any codes for any problems on it either so again you'd think if the timing was out we'd start to get a code but we aren't doing that so work for today um we just dropped off the d max for its mot i want to get the cash kai clean drove that over the weekend to, to home and back um that drive faults to see as well really really nice um i have to say after having driven it home and back as well you know i said that it had a little bit of vibration when you started the engine um i didn't really notice it i do think it's more likely to be an engine mount but i think it probably just needs a good hard drive maybe with some injector cleaner in it or something like that as well um maybe babied a bit so but i've got to do a photo shoot on the asx first i'm just deciding whether it looks like it's raining still so i may do the photo shoot inside which is a shame because that flooring is getting worse and worse but um it's not a bad environment it'll have the background of the mercedes and the and the skoda so it wouldn't be a bad background for the uh pictures uh oh look who's turned up it's davy universal scuffs I've got to get all this out of the way because the 2CV is going today um, which means I need to get all this other stuff out of the way first and I need to get the Jag out of the way so Davey can get in here and do some paint he's going to paint the dog hair Astra for me and then I'm going to take the Mitsubishi down to a different painter I haven't told him that yet let's break the news to him so we've had a rejig around, got the 2CV to the front. I'm slightly sorry to see it go. It was a project I'd like to have done, but I've got to get serious about how much time I've got. And to be honest, I'd just be better off buying a good one with the amount of time I've got. Um, and I've got my van to get done as well, haven't I? So that, that'll be my uh, Citroen itch scratched. I want to get my MGB up and running, just put the battery on charge on that. I might get a mobile mechanic out to have a look at that, because I want to be driving that again. Davey's working outside. Um, he did want his space inside here, but I said to him he was getting too soft for his own good. He needed to learn to paint outside again. <laughs> no, not really. He's um, he got that far masking by the time I'd done this that he might as well just carry on outside. So we'll see how he gets on there. And then we've got someone just going around the car park in mother-in-law's SLK, but they say they're going to look at a BMW Z4 tonight as well. So I don't know how serious a buyer they are. Dodged a bullet. One of her friends wanted to come and have a look at it. Um, nothing wrong with her friend. It's just I don't like the idea of selling cost to close friends i said to her i said have you sort of like gone through the little foibles you got with it because you know the key only does work when you're really close up to the car and there is a little drip from the hood which i think i can sort actually it's just a little split rubber i can see what it is um I, oh no i haven't told her those things i said well i would <laughs> i would because it'll only come back on you so i've been off with adrian dropped the uh, mirage over there and the 2cv uh, so they're both gone Look at this though, Davey's done the paint. Look at the colour match. I've never known anybody get colour matches as good as Davey does. I really haven't. He nails it every time. I didn't pay him to spray the top half of the bumper, so I'm going to put a cover on that. Um, he only did the two corners of the bumper. He did this here. I said, don't bother about taking the dent out, really, but he did do a little bit with it, I think, because it's nearly there, to be fair. But yeah, the colour match is absolutely... So he painted here and blended in around here somewhere you just can't tell and considering this was done outside in all the dust and the dirt blowing across look at the finish look at it man cannot speak highly enough of Davy, guys if you are a dealer and you need work doing in this local area get on to him but even if you're private and you just need a little bit of touch-up work done get on to Davy. i'll put a link to him down below universal scuffs but made a world of difference on this so yeah if i put a cover now across the back of here or textured paint or something or a chrome cover over the top edge there um you might say why didn't you do that center with these guys you get charged corners you can get a corner charge or you can get a full panel charge so uh, that's why we've done that yeah so we just need to get it valeted machine polish the rest of it get some of the light scratching out now get it valeted I don't think I'm going to have time to do that, get that dog hair out myself. Get the um, co the uh, glow pug code sorted and then she'll be ready for retail. I probably didn't make it clear, the guy I was selling the 2CV to is the guy that's doing the paintwork for me on the Mitsubishi. So that's how that's come about. Uh, it's happened again, isn't it? We're up now 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I haven't got around to valeting the... Uh, Balloting the cash car yet and getting that up for sale, which I was definitely going to get done today. 
Oh, matey, you looked at the Mercedes, didn't want to make a decision now because he said he wanted to go and see a Z4. He was asking me about Z4s and what I thought about them, like a 2005 Z4. What you guys have told me from the channel over this time is run a mile from BMWs of that age with those three litres and stuff on. Um, I don't know which ones it is have the timing chains at the front and which ones have the timing chain at the back. Um, but I know one of my mates did get a cheap Z4 once and he had a crap block on it, I think, and had to get rid of it straight away. So I said, you know, go and do your own research. But personally for me, the 1.8 supercharged Mercedes engine, I would have thought is likely to be less hassle than the BMW engines, but go away and do your own research. And he said he'd come back to me later. Three hours later, off to the gym. Started fine, no funny noises at all. Perfectly smooth idle. So I'll be in the gym for about an hour. We'll see how it is after that. So, following morning, I uh, ran out of battery at the gym last night listening to tunes on my earphones. So, uh, this is a cold start the following morning. Let's give it a quick go. Oh, that's smooth idle, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe I'm just worried too much about. So this is what it does. Um, let's run it a bit more and see what happens. So drove the DS in this morning after that little um, video of the startup. Went perfectly, guys. Went perfectly. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there is even an issue. I can't decide. So we'll let it go stone cold over today and then we will drive it again tonight home and see what the cold start is like. But now I had great fun on the way in. I say it's not quite as quick as I I kind of remember the, the uh, S being that I had, the Mini Cooper S, which I think has got the same engine. But then again, this is 2015, that was 2008, wasn't it? So probably a different engine to be honest, or slightly different tune or whatever. But yeah, it was... Um, it was a good little drive and I have to say there were no problems at all. No engine management lights still. Um, yeah, I think it's just a case of driving it more and more and just see what happens. And a second unit, I managed to cram everything back in here again. A little bit of sweep up first. So I moved the MGB further back, got the battery charging on that. Got the Golf in so I can get cracking on the Golf. I think I'll do that before the Micra. Obviously mother-in-law's Mercedes tucked up in here now. Still waiting to give this a clean off, but I want to make a bit more of a, a specific video for this car. So I'm going to hold off. It looks to me like the suspension might be down again on it. Is it? Or are they that close normally? I don't know, comment down below. Looks like the suspension might be down a bit or I might just be being a bit paranoid. Right, time to start getting this Nissan Qashqai ready for retail because we know it should fly out the door theoretically as soon as it's ready. So today we're on the clean up job. Started on the wheels. Already starting to look like we could be on to a winner here. Just needs a really good clean. So that's all the alloys done. Good news is Normally with this diamond cut condition can be a bit of an issue, you can get lacquer peel or just bad pitting, but actually, I mean there's some marks on that face of that one a little bit there. The passenger one against the kerb is surprisingly good, there's not actually any marks on the face of it. And the rear passenger one's good as well, which is really good news, because like I say, they can be very hit or miss these diamond cut alloys, they can look awful. If I'd have been. So the reason I do that before the rest of the car with the wheel acid is because if I wash the rest of the car then use the wheel acid it'll be less effective because it'll be diluted by the water that's on the wheel. So if I do it before I wash the rest of the car I get it doing its best performance but obviously rinsing it off straight away so that it doesn't damage any of the paint. Now these will need obviously a wash with the soapy suds and then they'll be going over with some um, wax as well to uh, really make them pop. 
but all that is done after the rest of the car is washed. So next thing is a snow foam and a, and a wash down, which I'm sure you don't need to see. We're gonna get some anti-tar on this here, where it's obviously had the bump strips on the corners of the door, which has done a nice job of protecting them, but obviously they look ugly. So now we can clean that off. And then we'll be looking to anti-tar down the sides here to pick up all the little black dots that picked up as you drive around the road. They, they're the bits that stick on there. Luckily, because you've got the plastic down here, it's not as bad as it is on other cars, but I can already see there are a sm few small little black dots there of tar, which we'll get off. Again, it's all about, like we did with the AXX, making the car pop really well when someone comes to look at it. People buy with their eyes first and foremost so let's make the car look as good as we can rather than just a basic 30 pound valet where none of these things are going to be done so before we go too much further with the outside of the car we need to get excuse the strimmer we need to get under the engine bay because when we clean this off it'll blast stuff on the outside of the car so we'll get this on first so a liberal dousing of g101 over the whole engine bay for it to break down grease and dirt and then we'll go over it with a brush and then we'll blast it off which i know worries a lot of people me blasting engine bays but as i keep saying i've got away with it today so i'm gonna carry on So I've got in, wet clean the bases of the seat on this and you can see they've come up lovely in the cash kai. Gone through, hoovered it all out, did the bases of the rear seats as well, all come out really really nice. Did all the carpets obviously, the mats are over there drying off after being cleaned. So next thing is plastics, I'm not sure if I'm going to fit that in today, that might roll into tomorrow now. I do have a viewing at 11 o'clock on the ASX, it's booked in at 11 o'clock if they turn up. Um, what I'd like to do is get this finished off before then and photographed so we can get this one up for sale. Thursdays is a good sale day. I didn't notice this before, it's got cameras underneath the wing mirrors as well. So, and a front camera. It's got four cameras on it, this thing. Pretty mad. Now, I want to leave the doors open overnight, let it air out where I've done the wet clean on the seats. But it's just getting better and better, this car, as we're going along and cleaning it. It's that number four or five. Again, idle seems okay. Tiny, tiny, li tiny little bit of, yeah, tiny, tiny little bit of um, variation. We just about to see it on the, no, it's gone smooth, it's gone completely smooth now. Right guys, so what I've got here is 2,500 cash. Now this has come from various deals where people have paid me a bit in cash. Some people pay me bank transfer, then pay part of it cash. People offer me cash all the time and I decline it because I really don't want to have to go to the bank. So when I do get it, I tend to kind of like just accumulate it. Don't keep it on site, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, I accumulate it. It obviously always gone through the books for the sales of the cars. So it's all taxed and so forth. But I was sitting here and I was thinking I, I had an idea with this, this cash because I keep it kicking around in case anybody swings by and wants to sell a car quickly and wants cash for it, which no one seems to these days. You all seem to want on bank transfers, like I do actually, I guess, for the same reasons. So I was sitting there looking at it and thinking, I'm about to do a deal today, and I'm planning on using this cash to buy the car, which will be revealed to you later on. And it's probably one of the riskiest purchases I've done. Um, that will become apparent when the, the car turns up. I've done some risky deals recently, but this is gonna be risky again. <laughs> But it came to thinking about, I've not obviously had this in the bank account, it's been sitting to the side, so I've not desperately needed it for the business. And I had an idea about, can we use this cash to trade up to a point where I get a dream motor for the business? And that is the Morgan 44 Sport. It's a car I've always wanted, and I know it's going to be a mixed, re mixed response to this, but the Morgan 44 Sport is a car my dad always wanted, and he never got to realise it. Um, and he should have done really um, left it too late unfortunately um, 
Uh, and I did actually hire one and drive one and really, really enjoyed it. And the idea I like about a 44 Sport is I get the classic car looks that I really, really enjoy. But with that 1.6 petrol in it, that is a modern unit, so you can hop in it and use it as, as often as you like without major hassle. Um, and low running costs. But I'll need about 40k for one of those. Um, it would be a car that would do well for the business in terms of it would even if it sat there for a while they don't depreciate in value so I could have it up for a decent price still have it to bomb around in every now and then and, and the business won't lose money on it so my idea is to try and take this two and a half up to 40 by trading and I thought it might be a bit of fun just to track this cash track this cash and each deal I do specifically with this cash up to that car now ideally I'm not going to do multiple cars with this because I've got a business to run I've got lots to be getting on with anyway I don't want to be doing three or four cars at a time to make this into the 40 so I'm going to have to start taking some brave pills and doing some fairly big trades to some high value cars so before I go hell for lever into that I guess the thing is comment down below is something that is that something you'd be interested in to see we do it as a, as a particular series it may well be there's not a huge amount of content for each one. We need to kind of do quick flips on these. We can't afford to do stuff that we didn't need to do a load of work to. We're not going to get there very quickly if we do that. So, yeah, comment down below. Let me know if it will be interesting. So our first deal is about to come in that we're going to use this cash to buy. It's probably one of my riskiest purchases yet, so that will add a little bit of drama to the whole thing. Um, it will become apparent why it's one of the riskiest deals yet when the car comes in. So um, we should be turning up any minute. So one thing I'm doing now, guys, I'm just stopping to make this point to some of you that have uh, set up your own little dealerships and starting to set up your own little dealerships. One thing I'm doing now as well is um, in between jobs is sending messages to customers who I encourage to connect with me on the Facebook page, giving them updates on what's happening with their stuff. So like the Hyundai i10 with the light, obviously she's been waiting about a week for the light now. So I've been updating you know, when I found the light, I updated it when the light was delivered, I updated, updated it when I dropped it down to the guys. So she doesn't have to chase me to find out what's going on. I preempt it all the time. That way you don't get any hassle. You, you don't get people chasing you, leaving messages, then them to ring back. They feel informed all the way uh, and comfortable. They know what's going on. So the guy with the Isuzu truck, I let him know when it went down for MOT. I then let him know what the result of the MOT was. I am... Um, then let him know that the parts have been dropped off, that it needed front uh, brake pads on it, um, and that it's going to be when it's going to be retested. And I send the messages on my phone via their Facebook, so I've got a record of it. One, two, I don't have to stop to deal with incoming phone calls. I can crack on what I'm doing because I send those messages whenever I'm free, um, and I can just read whatever they reply later on. Uh, but I just find that makes life so much easier. So that is a big top tip. I know prior to being a dealer myself, one thing that really frustrated me, and it still frustrates me with some suppliers now, is when they just go quiet and you have to chase them for updates on what's happening. Life is a lot easier if you take the time to do this. Here it is, guys, the potential start of Project Morgan. So this is a 2012 VW up, and I purchased this vehicle from a subscriber. Um, Vicky messaged me via Instagram. She watched the channel, and I always say, message me, if you want to speak to me about it, message me on Instagram. I normally always get back to you on Instagram. It's the easiest one for me to uh, speak to you on. Now, Vicky was having a go at uh, trading cars, buying Copart and salvage market type vehicles and doing repairs. But unfortunately, the unit she's at, they've told her now she's not allowed to have visitors. Um, they're not allowed to make sales from there and they're not allowed to make sales from their home address either, unfortunately. So this was the kind of last project she had on the go. And... Um, she needed to move it on really because apparently they're being quite difficult about it now in this is obviously a, a, a crash repaired car it is a cat n they had started on it they've replaced the whole front um rad pack here because it obviously had a front impact so n is obviously non-structural as we know which means all the chassis legs are all in good nick like a lot of small cars now before you get to the chassis you get the rad pack at the front which is this section here, and um, that takes the hit. And if it isn't too hard a hit, it won't touch the uh, chassis rails at all. It just touches this bolt-on bar at the front here. So they've replaced that bar, replaced the rad pack on it. Um, it's a, it's sort of say, I haven't said it, it's a 2012 VW Up. It's uh, the white edition, really nice looking little car. Um, it has the, I should have, should have videoed this out so I shouldn't have it pour in the rain. It has the chrome wing mirrors, it has the fancy alloys, and it also has 
the leather interior with the stitched VW up on it. White gear knob, leather stitch, white stitching everywhere. Really nice looking little car. Really nice looking. Um, I think this is a one litre, isn't it? And it's done under 50,000 miles. This one's also got the panoramic roof as well. I think it's just a fixed in grass roof, isn't it? It's not electric. Yeah, it's just got a blind on it. Yeah, so really nice spec. Has these uh, white alloys, which do have a lot of corrosion on. So I'm gonna have to do something about the outside edge of those, the corrosion on them. Yeah, really smart looking little car. You know VWs are popular down my way. So she messaged me and let me know that she needed to get shot quick, hassle free. Um, so they've put the rad pack on, they put the bonnet on. They did say they got one the right color, but you can see it's not. It's, uh, but that's the way paint codes are sometimes. You see the, the rest of the car's got a slightly blue tinge to this white, whereas this is very sort of polar white. So I'm gonna have to have Davey spray that or somebody else spray that. Um, I don't wanna risk finding another bonnet because it could be slightly off on color again. I don't think it's gonna sell with the bonnet that color. Inside the car, I have the replacement bumper and I have two new headlights for it as well. So I think I've got all the parts, but we won't know until we start putting it together. Um, Obviously, it drove in here, so it's drive driving fine. Um, it does have an airbag light on it now, which has popped up, which I suspect has got something to do with a lot of what's been unbolted. It could be one of the, I don't know if that might be a fault, for if it will get an airbag LED light for a crash sensor somewhere here, whether it's just the seats have been moved about. So we'll have to look into what that is. Now, obviously, when Vicky first messaged me, there was that concern, you know, why is someone stopping halfway through? Why not just finish it off, bolt it all together? Um, but obviously, I've, I've taken Vicky on her word that there isn't any major issue. I mean, I've had a look at it. Panel gap-wise, needs a little bit of a tweak up in this corner to close the gap there, but there's loads of adjustment that can be done on that. It was obviously a very light hit. The damaged bumper is in the boot. It's cracked the bumper all up, obviously. Um but it's a light hit. It's, you know, these are so blunt fronted, you get the lightest hit. It uh, compresses the rad pack um, and that bar at the front there. You can see it's all looking straight else, elsewhere. Brand new tires on it all round. And unusual for a cat car, this came with all of its handbooks and it came with the, uh, a service book. A stamped up service book and it's got a full service history so that's a big bonus as well um let's say vicky and her dad so i didn't take his name have replaced these sections here they just bolt across here to the lights to sit in so they replaced those as well i think I, I don't know if those were damaged or not but i think they said they replaced those and there's new clips in there for the bumper as well so hopefully it shouldn't be too much more than a bit of a bolt job bolt on job obviously i didn't factor in having to spray the bonnet which isn't ideal, but hopefully I can find someone to get a really good match for me on that. So this car, I would think retail ways, based on prices, these VW ups are worth money. They really are. I think retail wise, allowing for 25% less it being cat, I think it'll be like a four and a half car. I think, um, I'll check my maths on that in a bit, but I think it'll be about the four and a half mark. Or anyway, between four, between four and four and a half, I'd love to do it at 3995. If I can, I'd love to 3995 it, but I don't know if that's gonna be possible. We're gonna to have to find out. I like to say, now we're having the bonnet painted, that will add some squids to it all. It depends how many other parts I need uh, to get to do on it. It depends how much time is spent on these alloys, whether we're gonna to have to send them out or whether I can actually re recover those myself with a bit of sanding. It's not going to be easy to do with sanding tools because you can't really get in there. You've got to get this lacquer off without damaging this white. So, yeah, might have a word with the wheel guy down in Barnstable and see whether he can just put it on his machine and lathe off the edge of it or something. Yeah, you might be able to do that, just skim the edge off and polish the edge of it. I'll get a quote for how much to do that because it saved me an awful lot of time. I'll be here forever trying to tidy those up. And I don't want to just do a bodge job on them. I want it to look all look factory because it is a really nice special edition. So yes, so this one, we paid 2000 for it. And then I put a couple hundred quid on for delivery. So we're in 2-2, including the delivery now on it. So hopefully parts aren't too much. This isn't one to be making an absolute fortune on. But like I say, hopefully it's the start of moving ourselves up 
if comment down below if that series sounds like something of interest or not or whether you're not really interested just keep flipping cars james and stop trying to do anything fancy <laughs> let me know so following down i've just managed to finish the nissan and it's about three o'clock in the afternoon and get the photo shoot and the video done it uh that's because i came in first thing and the light for the i30 that needs to be done down the mot station turned up my house not here so i had to nip off get that come back in by the time i'd sorted all that out the lady was here to see the asx and turned out she actually liked the look of the nissan as well when she turned up obviously that isn't fully advertised yet so she wanted to test drive both the asx and the nissan which obviously got the nissan a little bit dirty again so it needed another clean up before i could do the photo shoot and the video i'm going to do the photo shoot and the video anyway even though she was pretty keen on it because you know people don't always do what they say they're going to do and she wants to bring her husband back so you know until such time is obviously available for sale uh, then ian turned up old ian from tarka plumbing uh, the gas guy turned up um and then pt turned up <laughs> So by the time I got those things done and then ran down and dropped the lights off to Moore's, uh, I was behind again. So, but finally got it done. As you can see, she looks fantastic, photographed really well, interior came up really well. Looking really good. The lady was very impressed with it when she took it out today. In fact, she liked the engine in this more than the engine in the Mitsubishi, which is funnily what I said, isn't it, when I drove it? So it'll just I think because it I, I think the torque must kick in lower down on this than on that because this feels a bit nippier lower down but not once it starts to stretch in its legs but I can't believe the alloys in this I think I said it already but the ones I've had with these alloys on them normally had some lacquer peel on them but these look almost like they've been refurbed apart from that rock front one that's had a little scuff on it they almost look completely refurbed but yeah really really nice looking car I'll be interested to see how quickly this one sells now and get on and list it but the trouble is now I photographed the Mitsubishi inside because it was raining yesterday now it's blazing sunshine so I feel like I should pull the Mitsubishi back out again do the photos outside and then relist that so even just the job of photographing stuff is very time consuming especially if you want it right so I think I am going to do that pull it out because it was a bit dark in here yesterday and pictures don't look as good on this as they do on the Nissan from photographing outside so let's get on and do that well driven in this morning it's finally popped a code guys now this is an interesting one i think i know what the code is going to be it's going to be turbo related and the reason i say that is because what i did notice yesterday driving it home which i didn't mention on this morning startup is i drove with the window down and as i was driving along the turbo was quite audible as in i could hear the pressure building and i could hear it releasing almost like a dump valve it's quite a um, quite a hissing noise which I yeah leads me to believe that there may be an air leak issue on this and perhaps all this time rather than being hydraulic pressure that was causing lumpy idle it's something to do with airflow instead maybe so we'll get the top done out pull the code off that in a bit I've got a feeling it did do this code once before when I first got it in I've got a feeling it'll be the solenoid on the turbo possibly I've replaced that on one of the on the Mini Cooper Turbo, which had very similar things before. It was a bit a bit poor in boost because when the service light came up was when I was going up a hill and I put my foot to the floor because I wanted to test the turbo again. And it's obviously read uh, an incorrect boost on it. But I am thinking perhaps we have got an air leak somewhere within the system as well. So um, this car continues to throw up question marks as to what's going on with it. <laughs> but anyway, we'll get the top done on, pull the code and see what it's relating to.